in June. June's always been the hottest month to me. Um, Grace Valley, I appreciate you hanging in here like a hair in a biscuit for the last over a year. I, I, keep, I keep trying to get the mind of our church, more than that, the mind of God. Um, I'll never forget um, Brother Durbin Spears, great friend of mine. He's like a brother to me. And uh, he was a, a, a very young, young preacher before he was pastoring. Uh, in the church serving under Noah Broughton. And they went into a revival meeting and Durbin said it was dead as a hammer. But the church came out. Nobody got saved. Nobody come to altar. It was just dead as a hammer. And, but the church, you know, they were faithful and they came out and and uh, but Brother, brother uh, Broughton gets up and he says, you know, I know this doesn't sound right to you. But... Uh, he said, uh, I believe the Lord wants to go on for another week. And everybody went, oh, man. You know, they're tired. They're, they're wore out. They went that second week, and it was dead as a hammer. And everybody nervous said, boy, he said, oh, oh, no, he missed this one. He missed it. He said, but the church was good. They, you know, about, about. Uh, it seemed like the way I heard Durbin tell the story about half their attendance fell off was down to hardly a uh, little, little bit by the time the end of that week went by, but they made it through it. You know, Brother Broughton got up that Sunday after two weeks of every night of revival meeting and no stir of God stood there and wept. He said, I just believe God wants us to go another week. And the whole Brother Durbin he, you know, you'd have to know Brother Durbin. He was fighting mad. He said, he's killing this church. He's killing this church. He's going to kill this church. And that, that, that third week, three weeks of revival meeting, that third week, a few folks came out. And the Lord showed up. And they broke out in revival. And Dur Durbin said, I don't even remember how many people got saved during that third week. Hmm. You know, Jesus uses that verse over there to the, it's really to the Jews when he said, He that endureth to the end, the same shall be saved. It's to the Jews. But there's a lot in the Bible about hanging in there till the end. And you've hung in here with us over the last year outside. And God's been good to us. Amen. So I'm constantly trying to get the mind of our church leaders. But more than that, the mind of God as, as to which direction we go as a church. And all I can tell you is this. I can preach anywhere. I can preach inside. I can preach outside. I about worship anywhere. But I really want what the Lord wants. Amen. And I think, I think you do too. And so we just hang in here together. And do what do what God tells us to do. And we'll do like the saints of old until God tells us to or moves us to. We just keep on doing the last thing He told us to. Job chapter 41. I very seldom preach from the book of Job, but we're going to read the whole chapter this morning. Job chapter 41. While you're turning there in your Bibles, I want to share this with you. You feel free to stand up and stretch your legs any time during the message. Just don't leave. It may be rather lengthy. The book of Job, chapter 41. Of course, Job is the dinosaur book. There are dinosaurs and dragons Job talks about uh, in, 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 in his writings. Job, chapter 41, concerns a, a creature called Leviathan. And Leviathan is a fire-breathing sea monster. Now, historically, we, we know historically this creature existed because he's all in the writings of captains and sailors. They've seen him numerous times and uh, of, of, of old. But symbolically, he is Satan. 
Now, don't ever forget that, you know, when you're watching TV shows or comics or comedies or anything else and you see uh, dragons, the Bible says that Satan is the great dragon. Dragons are always symbolic of not good but evil, uh, of, of Satan. And in Job chapter 41, um, Job gives us, uses Leviathan, which was a creature that was well known during his day, to explain to you the power and presence of Satan. And so let's look in Job chapter 41 and verse 1. Job says, Canst thou, now this is really God arguing, making an arguing point, canst thou draw out Leviathan with a hook? Can you, in other words, can you catch him with a hook? Or his tongue with a cord which thou lettest down? Canst thou put a hook into his nose or bore his jaw through with a thorn? Will he make many supplications unto thee? Will he speak soft words unto thee? Will he make a covenant with thee? Wilt thou take him for a servant forever? Wilt thou play with him as with the bird, or wilt thou bind him for thy maidens? Shall the companions make a banquet of him? Shall they part him among the merchants? Canst thou fill his skin with barbed irons, or his head with fish spears? Lay thine hand upon him, remember the battle, do no more. Behold, the hope of him is in vain. Shall not one be cast down even at the sight of him? None is so fierce that 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 dare stir him up who then is able to stand before me now here is God God describing that was a a, a, a creature uh, a dragon a fire breathing dragon that could not be caught could not be killed by mankind that during Job's day sailors were were well aware of this creature it was, it was not a fairy tale they knew this you can't catch him you can't bind him he's a sea monster um and and then god said now if you can't handle him how do you think you're gonna handle me it's what god said if you can't tame him how do you think you're gonna tame me and so um then in verse 11 who hath prevented me that i should repay him Whatsoever is under the whole heaven is mine. I will not conceal his parts, nor his power, nor his comely proportion. Who can discover the face of his garment? Or who can come to him with his double bridle? Who can open the doors of his face? His teeth are terrible round about. Now he's going to describe this creature. His teeth are terrible round about. His scales are his pride, shut up together as with a closed seal. One is so near to another that no air can come between them. They are joined one to another. They stick together that they cannot be sundered. By his kneesings, that's an old English word for sneezings, by the way. By his kneesings, a light does shine. Now, he's breathing fire out. He's, he's sneezing out fire. Remember this, he, his, he's got scales. He's sneezing out fire. He's got teeth. No man can catch him. No man can kill him. No man can tame him. And his eyes are like the eyelids of the morning. Out of his mouth go burning lamps and sparks of fire leap out. He is not speaking figuratively here. He's telling you what this creature could do. Out of his nostrils go a smoke and as out of a seething pot or cauldron. His breath kindleth coals and a flame goeth out of his mouth. In his neck remaineth strength, and sorrow is turned into joy before him. The flakes of his flesh are joined together. They are firm in themselves. They cannot be moved. His heart is as firm as a stone, yea, as hard as a piece of the nether millstone. When he raiseth up himself, the mighty are afraid. By reason of breakings they purify themselves. The sword of him that layeth at him cannot hold. The spear, the dart, nor the habergeon, he esteemeth iron as straw and brass as rotten wood. The arrow cannot make him flee. Sling stones are turned with him into stubble. Darts are counted as stubble. He laughed at the shaking of a spear. Sharp stones are under him. He spreadeth sharp pointed things upon the mire. He maketh the deep to boil like a pot. He maketh the sea like a pot of ointment. He maketh a path to shine after him. 
one, one would think the deep to be hoary. Upon earth there is not his like, who is made without fear. He beholdeth all high things. He is a king over all the children of pride. Now what he has done is just described to you what Satan looks like. He's just described to you what Satan looks like. How terrible that he is. And then at the close of him describing how horrible that he is, he tells us that he is the king over all the children of pride. Over all the children of pride. We have been hammered. We have been hammered this year, especially this month, with it being Pride Month. The month of pride. And, and the, uh, the, the, uh, 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 the indoctrination, and it is an indoctrination. The, uh, the indoctrination is, and they're using the term love, is love. And they're using that in the sense of homosexuality, in the sense of sodomy. That, that now, now, it is a spit in the face of God. Why is it a spit in the face of God? See, see, nowhere does God ever say love is love. What the Bible says is that God is love. And, and, and so what they've done is reversed it and said love is love. In other words, any kind of love goes. Now, now I told you this. I've already told you it was coming. I've been telling you for 20-something years, this is coming. I've been saying it to the churches around the country for 30-something years, this is coming. I remember 30 years ago preaching a message, they're after your children. And they were. They're after your grandchildren. And they are. They're after the next generation. And might I say this, that they have a plan and their plan is working. It is. It is working. Now, there's a lot of love that God has forgiven. For, forgiven. But there's a lot of love that God has forbidden. God yes. has forbidden that kind of love yes. between male to male. God has forbidden that kind of love between uh, woman to woman. God has not, de, de, God has not um, told you you can't feel certain things. But God has told you and I we can't act on certain things. Now the problem is, is, is now it is accepted it, on television, it is accepted in families, it is, is now being accepted in churches that love is love. Well, where does love is love? Where does love is love? Which means this, if it's love, it's love, regardless of who or what it's for. Love is love. That's what that, that, it, that means. So where, where does it stop? Does it stop with men loving other men? In a sexual way? Will it stop there? Will it stop with women loving other women in a sexual way? Will it stop there? No, it won't. 30 years ago, 30, over 30 years ago, I began to tell people it won't stop there. It won't stop uh, until they legalize pedophilia. Mm. They will have to legalize. See, they're already saying love is love. This is the direction it's going. Now, if you have not noticed this week, this month, um, let me back up a little bit. Let me just uh, put it in reverse and back up some. Years ago, what, what their, their crowd said, you know, uh, what their crowd said was, we just, we just want to be accepted. That's what they said. We just want to be accepted. Well, I knew that wasn't true. Nobody ever wants to just be accepted. Well, what they really wanted, because several had come forth and said, we, we don't want to be accepted. What we want to do is be in charge. And, and so what, what they really want to do is completely, completely take over, and, and, and they are doing it. And, and, so, and so what happened was, you know, they began to have their, their, their big day. They began to have their big memorial day. Now it's turned out they have their, their big month. Mm. Now you need to understand, they don't just have their big month. Because now what's happening is it's going to be their big year. It's, it's the big takeover. Takeover of the polls. Uh, takeover. 
the voting system, take over strategically in governmental places. Now, I don't know if you know much about what what has gone on lately on the, on the children's uh, 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 networks. Nickelodeon, which is a channel that we, we uh, our kids, a lot of our kids grew up watching. Nickelodeon has now, for the, for the month of June, has taken and, and, and geared all their cartoons toward transgender, women with women. They've gone as far as in a cartoon to have a woman marry another woman, a female character. They've squeezed in uh, sponge Bob Squarepants and, and used them as gay characters. Gay characters. I watched Blue's Clues. But Paul sent me a little, 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 little clip the other day and I started looking at it. Blue's Clues. I remember Sarah watching Blue's Clues when she was a little girl. And now on Blue's Clues, they've had a, a transgender uh, cross-dresser, a man dressed up like a woman, singing a song, a children's song, to children. This has been going on all month. To children who are being babysitted by television and by cartoons that parents think they can trust teaching them a, a drag queen. That's what they had, a drag queen singing children's songs about women in love with women, men in love with men, about love is love no matter who it's for, what it's about to children. Now, this has been on all of your major uh, cartoon networks this month, pushing it. See, they, they, they no longer want to be accepted. What they want now, they want your child. They want your grandchild. They, they want them to be like them. That's what Jesus said what the wicked would do. The wicked wouldn't be satisfied. They wouldn't be satisfied. They'd never be satisfied until, uh, un, 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 until they had taken everyone and made them just like them. Now, I don't know about you, but I want everybody to have Christ like me. Amen. I want everybody to go to heaven. Yes. I want everybody to be saved. I want, I want them to go to heaven. I, I want them to meet us in the air, in the clouds. Man, I, I want us to enjoy heaven. So I want people to hear the gospel. I want people to be born again. I want people to be saved. I want my grandbabies going to heaven. Amen. That crowd over there, they want them going to hell. That crowd over there wants them to be like them. And, and, uh, and they're recruiting them. I want you to remember that. Sodomites, Sodomites do not reproduce. They recruit. And they recruit when they're children. That's why it's important to protect your children from them, from their, from their influences, uh, because they'll distort their mind, distort them. They'll grow up thinking that's okay. Already, already I see Christians. Already I said, I see it happening at Grace Valley. I see you being tolerant to it. You're becoming tolerant. Like, 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 it's, like, like it's okay. You lessen up and you lessen up and we lessen up more and more. You know, it's like the, I've used the example for years, you look and you see a storm coming. You say, boy, bad storm's coming, it's a black cloud. How many times you said that, boy, big old black cloud's coming, boy, a storm is coming. Oh, it's going to storm. Look at that black cloud, get everything covered up, run, put everything up, fold the chairs up, a storm is coming. But you know, once that cloud comes over and shuts out the sun, it's not such a big black storm anymore. It's just kind of gray. Oh, it's as black as it ever was. It's just a light. You can't see the sun anymore. You don't see that black cloud compared to that light. And so now it just looks gray. You know what's happened over the past several years? This junk has become gray to us. It ain't all that bad. I want you to know it's bad. It's as bad. It's as ungodly. It's as ungodly as it gets. It doesn't get any, any ungodlier. It's as wicked. It's as unkind. Now. Is it no, can you still hear me? It is no coincidence, no coincidence whatsoever that that crowd picked this month as Pride Month. This is Pride Month. Let me ask you what the Bible says about pride, the children of pride. Who's their daddy? Huh? Satan. That's what the Bible says. He is the king over all the children of pride. Don't you ever get, don't you ever get it mixed up. They're on one side of this war, and it is a war. And you and I are on the other side of the war. We're on this side. We're on God's side. They're on their daddy's side. I'm on my father's side. 
They're on their father's side. Don't you ever make a mistake about it. You can't fellowship with them. You can't friendship with them. They're on the side of Satan. They are the children of pride, which are, the Bible says, your King James Bible says this, that, that he is the king over all the children of pride. Is that what the Bible says? That's what the Word of God has said. Don't you ever forget who their daddy is. You know, we had that big thing come out years ago. Everybody was saying, who's your daddy? Well, who's their daddy? I'll tell you who my daddy is. My daddy on this earth is Woodrow Ivy Meese. I'm proud to have him. I'm thankful to have him. Let me put it that way. And uh, that, that, that's my dad. My, my, my spiritual father is the father of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He gave us some to die for my sins. He gave him to suffer on Calvary's cross. Uh, uh, he, he paid the great price to adopt me. And he's coming back to get me. He's my father. He gave me a new birth into his family. He is my father. The great God of heaven is my father. Can I ask you, is he your father? Yes. And you claim him as your father. Yes. Well, don't you ever question who their father is. Because if they're part of the pride movement, I want you to know the children of pride are the children of Satan, and we cannot change that. I want to take for just a few minutes, if I could. I want to take just a few minutes and then tell you what the Bible says about pride. Now, first of all, do you know what pride is? There is a term that we use in the sense, you know, that I, I, am, I am proud to be an American. I am proud Woodrow's my father. What I really mean when I say that is I am thankful. I am thankful. It doesn't mean that I have anything to boast about or brag about, but I am thankful. Now, I never hardly ever use Greek words, okay? I do enjoy looking them up, but every now and then one will reach out and grab me, and it will just kind of help you give a definition um, of, uh, of what we're talking about. In the New Testament, when the word pride is used, which has the same definition, it comes from a Greek word, and the Greek word is um, pronounced braggadocia. Isn't that something? Braggadocia. Braggadocia. In other words, it, the term bragging rights come from it. When you brag, you're bragging. If you brag on something you've done, you're bragging on yourself. You're saying, I did this. Boy, you're on dangerous ground. You ought to say, by the help and grace of God, this, this got accomplished. Oh, uh, the old king over there uh, in Babylon said, look at this kingdom I have built. And, and, and a decree was given from heaven that he should know that God was the Most High. And it was God that built that kingdom. And the Bible says this about that old king. The Bible says that at that moment a, a voice spoke from heaven. Judgment was decreed upon him. God took his mind from him. And the Bible says for one, one year, one year, the richest man on planet earth began to grow hair like an animal. He grew claws like a wild animal. He walked around on all fours like a wild animal. And he ate grass like an ox, the Bible says, like a wild animal. He did that for a year until God got his attention. And one day God gave him back his mind. Can you imagine God doing that to you? Gave him back his mind. And that old king looked up and he said, you know what? I didn't do this. I didn't build this kingdom. Found himself naked, covered in hair like a wild animal. Living out in the forest, people walked by and looked at him and he'd growl and slobber at them. Lost his mind until he looked up to heaven and said, I didn't do anything, but God did it. I tell you, if you got legs to walk on, you ought to thank God that you got legs to walk on. If you can breathe air and your lungs still work and you're not having to be hooked up to oxygen, you ought to thank God for it. You can still see and you can still talk and you can still sing. You ought to sing to the best of your ability. You ought to stand up. You ought to worship. You ought to cry out. You ought to use everything you got. And you ought to be thankful for it. Braggadocia it means self-confidence, boasting pride. It means to be empty. It means to be a braggart. And the Bible says this. The definition is, is, um, is that the Bible says for all that is in the world... The lust of the flesh, listen to this, the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. It means to be insolent and to have an empty assurance 
you realize the assurance, all the assurance that you have in your self capabilities, the assurance you have in yourself is called pride. God doesn't like it. God wants your assurance and my assurance in Him. God wants us to say like the Paul did, the Apostle Paul, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Not in my own strength. Not in my own self-confidence. Not in my own self-assurance. But I can face giants like David did because God was with David. I can walk down the fire not because I am confident in me or my strength, but the Bible says that God has chosen the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. So that everything gives God the glory. If God's blessed you, you remember it was God that did it. Pride has no place in the work of God. Pride has no place in the work of God. I had a black man I worked with years ago. I like to see people worship. Can somebody say amen to that? Amen. I like to see them stand up during song service. I like to see them make fools out of themselves. I like to see them run. I like to get in some of the old worship service where people get up and get so happy they run. I, I, liked, I, I loved hearing... Uh, 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 that old preacher, Mays Jackson, was preaching, I think it was over in uh, Mississippi somewhere in a revival, and Mays was kind of charismatic. He was a big old boy. He, for years, he had that old radio program called the Truck Driver Special. Did you ever listen to him going down the road, Brother Jim? Mays had such a big old fat neck that he uh, he couldn't wear a tie. He just just big old fat neck. And he said, when God called me to preach, he said, I told God. He said, God, I can't preach. His little old bitty fellow said, I can't preach. He said, every good preacher I know is fat and bald-headed. God said, I'll accommodate you. By the time he left this world, he was fat and he was bald-headed. Old May said he was preaching one day and the pastor was behind him. He was in a, one of them old strict, independent, fundamental churches. And He said, this little old lady with a ball on the back of her head got up and, and said, man, she was... Dancing, just a, a slow dance down the aisle. He said, here she came down that aisle, just quietly dancing. And the old Baptist preacher looked up at him, sitting behind him. He said, sit her down, Mays. Sit her down. I'll never forget it. Old Mays Jackson turned around and said, I didn't stand her up. I sure ain't going to sit her down. I like to see it when somebody gets full of God and they're happy. They move around during song service or they move around during preaching or they stand up or, or they move. They're, they're excited about God. They're not, they're not excited about what they can do, but they're excited about what God did. The old black fellow told me, he said, he called me Dawn. Like, like Dawn, dishwashing detergent. Dawn. He said, you know why white people don't worship Dawn? I said, why? He said they got too much pride. They're too proud. He said they want to stand up. They want to shout. They want to dance. They want to do something crazy. Some of them want to get happy. They want to express their happiness. But they're too proud. He said white folks are too proud to worship. I got to watching that and thinking about it and I thought that's true. White people get too dignified. We get a form of godliness and deny the power of God thereof. We get filled up in pride. Let me preach on pride for a minute if I can. Let's help you, man, to get rid of your pride. Pride will stand in the way. Remember, he is a king over all the children of pride. The Bible says this, the wicked in his pride doth prosecute the poor. What do the prideful do? They, pro they persecute. I said prosecute, they, they persecute the poor. Let me ask you something, when you ride by the poor and the poverty, does your heart go out to them? I'm not saying you ought to hand them over money, but does your heart go out to them and do you say to yourself, were it not for the grace of God, I'd be just like them? I'd be that wide old down in the gutter? Or does your heart get lifted up in pride? And does your heart say, you know what? Uh, if I'm not there, they shouldn't be there. You don't know where they came from. You don't know how many children they buried. You don't know the mental illness that they have. You don't know how broken they might be. You can't look at them and tell where they've been. You don't know how many heartaches that person's been through. 
You don't know how many accidents or how much physical or mental pain they're in. You can't look at them and you can't tell. You can't tell. I can tell you this like that old king in Babylon. I can tell you this. Child of God, if you're not real careful in your judgment, God will put you down there eating straw like an ox. God will put you up underneath that interstate. You'll be hooked on three types of, uh, of illicit drugs or you'll be a wino. God will take your mind. Boy, when you ride by and you look at them, I'm not saying you ought to give them money. I'm saying you ought to say, God, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And then say a prayer for them. God, help them. God, help them. Regardless of how they got there, God, help them. You don't know the struggle going on in people's lives. You ever got mad at somebody on the highway and wanted to run them down and shoot them? <laughs> Just in the leg? You hadn't? You, you have? Praise God. Me too. Yeah. I remember being a kid and hearing my daddy say, I wish I had machine guns mounted on the hood of this car. That was Woodrow's theology. I was glad he didn't. There wouldn't be nobody on the highway, I can tell you that. You ought to heard the things he says about your driving. I want to tell you something. You ever thought about what that person that just cut you off on the highway might have just gone through? The phone call they might have just got. Maybe they're not some hard, bold jerk. Maybe. Maybe they just found out that their mama's dying. Maybe they just found out that a child of theirs <laughs> has just been a terrible accident. Maybe something horrible. I mean, you never know. When I was a young man, I was hot-headed like the rest of them. But the older you get, you begin to realize there's tragedies in life. Maybe they just got some real bad news. And maybe you're all that stands in between them and something horrible. Maybe they need to see you smile. Huh? I'm not telling you I practice what I preach. I'm just telling you maybe they need it. Pride. Pride. Pride is something God can't stand. The wicked in his pride doth persecute the poor. He rides by and says you got what you deserve. He may not say it out of his mouth, but sometimes he thinks in his mind, you're there because you chose to be there. Maybe they didn't choose to be there. Let me ask you something. When you walk through the valley of hell, when you walk down to the valley of hell that you walked through in your life, and you haven't walked down through it yet, you probably will. But when you walk down through that valley of darkness and despair, and it seemed like the demons of hell were chomping on you, did you think to yourself, I caused this? Or did you think to yourself, why is this happening? And sometimes it happens and you don't know why it happened. I tell you, you better think about that before you persecute the poor because the children of pride persecute the poor. The wicked through the pride of his countenance will not seek after God. I laughed. I went to the uh, Brother Tim's, as most of you know, I announced it on Facebook. His daddy died. Brother Tim Solcher's dad died. I loved his dad. Loved his family. He has a great family, a unique family. It seemed like they all have a unique love for God. But I got tickled him talking about his dad. Now his dad was as country as they get, as hard a worker as you'd ever get. Loved his boots and loved his jeans. Tim said that his daddy, you could, he could take off his blue jeans. They had so much starch on them, you could stand them up in the corner. He wore them old western shirts. He said he could take it up and stand over there by it. He said dad was real particular about his hair. He said dad was standing there. Now you'd never know it because he was such a worker. He'd stand in there and get every hair in place and then shoot it up with a hairspray. He had that poofy hair. Tim said, now if there's ever a man that was vain about his looks, and my daddy was. And he'd give you anything, boy, he had, he'd give it to you. He'd help you, bend over backwards, do anything for anybody, faithful, worked hard, Man had a love for God, love for his family. The Bible says the wicked to the pride of his countenance. You know, one of the worst things that can happen is you start thinking 
you, you're, you look good, you fit good, you, you're the pride of your countenance, but because you look good, you look fit, you feel good, the Bible says the, the, the proud will not seek after God because everything about them they're happy with. It's a bad place to get, child of God. Pride. In other words, what we have now, if you hadn't followed this, the Word of God so far, you have the children of pride over here. They're the children of, of, of the wicked Leviathan. And then you have the children of the broken. That's the children of Almighty God. Amen. The Bible says the fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride, and arrogancy, and the evil way, and the fired mouth do I hate. This is what God said. God said, I hate pride. I hate arrogancy. I hate the evil way. I hate the froward mouth. God said, I hate it. I hate this thing. Pride is not of God. Pride is always of the wicked one. So pride month is of the wicked one. Yes. Let me tell you something about the rainbow. It's a shame thing. The rainbow was a symbol of God's judgment on sin. God put that rainbow up there to remind you that God wasn't going to tolerate wickedness on the earth and God destroyed the world by a flood and then God gave us a sign of a covenant the rainbow he said when you see that rainbow up in the sky you remember that's my rainbow you remember I put it up there to tell you I will never destroy the world by water again no matter how hard it rains you remember it won't it won't cover the earth again one day fire will but water won't they stole they have stolen. They have stolen God's symbol. The rainbow is God's symbol. It's a symbol of God's covenant, not a symbol of illicit lust and wickedness and pride. It is not a symbol of pride. They have stolen what is God's. They have perverted what is God's. And it makes me mad. I do realize this is considered hate speech this morning, isn't it? But it's God's. And then, and, then, and, and then the Bible says, When pride cometh, cometh shame. Pride will always come shame. But with the lowly is wisdom. Isn't that amazing? Here is God saying pride's on one side and, and, and humility is on the other. Pride is on Satan's side and humility is on God's side. Who's going to inherit the earth? The meek shall inherit the earth. Blessed are the meek. The meek shall inherit the earth. Blessed are the meek. The Bible says, By pride cometh contention. But with the well advised is wisdom. Pride is going to bring contention. Every single time, pride will bring contention. It will separate. Through the years, I've seen people get in competition in church. Now I'm getting old. I'm getting old. I'm catching up with my brother Mike. He's already old. I'm catching up with him. So, you know, I'm I'm getting old. I realize that. People don't, when I was a young man, people would vie for my attention. I've actually watched through the years two members get mad at each other because I was paying one more attention than the other. You know, it's not like that anymore. Nobody wants my attention now. It's just, you sh yeah, you're sure, Brother Don, just move along. I'm kidding you. You get two people. You ever get two women in a church and they think they look good? Man, you, you, they, they, they think they look good? Now this, this happens. And this one here, she's going to outdress this one. And this one, man, she's going to outdo this one. You, you, you get a church split real fast like that. They don't usually last too long around Grace Valley. Well, I tell you, the devil don't want this one preached, does he? Yeah. We're going to preach it anyway. The Bible says this about it. You going to keep going there, Brother Paul? Keep going. The Bible says that pride, pride, somebody say that word. Pride. Pride. pride goeth before destruction. Pride goeth before destruction. Pride goeth before destruction. Pride goes before destruction. And, and, and the Bible tells us that a Holy Spirit before a fall. 
But when you get lifted up in pride and you're like old Nebuchadnezzar and you start saying, I did this and I've done that, boy, you better mark a guy that's about to knock you down. You know what's about to happen in this pride movement? God's going to knock it down. It's a matter of time. You're going to see God knock it down. Now, I don't know how God's going to knock it down. God may knock us all down with it. But you keep your distance from that crowd. I'm not telling you to mistreat them. I'm not telling you to murder them. I'm not telling you to kill them. I'm not telling you to persecute them. But I want you to know you keep your distance because the pride goeth before destruction and the Holy Spirit before a fall. Why in the world do they call it Pride Month? Why do they call it a pride parade? Why do they call homosexuality pride? Proud. Why is that? Because pride is the biggest thing against God that you'll ever have. Pride is sending people to hell. Pride is sending grandchildren to hell. Pride, proud, self-confidence, uh, 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 bragging rights, th those things making us feel like we're somebody. Those things come in between us and God. But a, hu a humble spirit, a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart, O oh God, thou wilt not despise. That's what God says. Don't let you ever forget, they're on one side and we're on the other. This side's going to heaven. You listen to me. That side's going straight to hell. You cannot change that. That is an abomination against the holy God. You cannot continue to do that and God not eventually turn you over to a reprobate mind. And so, here is, here is God telling us that this, this haughty spirit goeth before a fall. Pride goeth before destruction. Now look, you just go ahead and throw your Bible away if you don't believe it. A man's pride shall bring him low, but honor shall uphold the humble in spirit. God, because of the sin of homosexuality, the sin of lesbianism. Now if you want to read, really read what God has said about it, read Romans chapter 1. God took five cities where you find the Dead Sea right now. The Dead Sea is dead because it has inflow but no outflow and the minerals have collected in it and it will, it will literally dehydrate you in no time. It's full of salt. It's called the Salt Sea, the Dead Sea. And so you have the Jordan River that runs down and it, and it comes into the Dead Sea. It has no outflow. The water evaporates and all the minerals are left there. It's kind of like your life. You can have life-giving water flowing into you, but if there's no outflow, I'm telling you, you'll be as dead as the Dead Sea in no time. There'll be no life, and everything that gets in your sea, you'll suck the life out of it. You have to have outflow, child of God. You have to have outflow. It's not enough to have inflow of God. You have to have outflow. If there's joy in you, the joy ought to come out. Amen. If there's happiness in you, it ought to come out around somebody. Man, if there's exuberance in you, it ought to come out somewhere. You have to flow out. You have to flow out. The river bottom doesn't get to hang on to the water. It has to let it go. You and I don't get to hang on to the water, but we do get to stay wet with the blessings of God all the time. God took those cities down in the Vale of Sidon because of the wickedness. God got Lot and his family out. The Bible says that God opened up the earth and rained down, pushed out hell, pushed out sulfuric fire and brimstone and rained down on those cities and the earth opened up and where you find the Dead Sea right now what, what was, was, what was where the valley of Sodom and Gomorrah was at and God rained fire down upon them to let you know what God thought about a, a, a about that great sin. Now, let me read to you what happened to those the people in those cities. In Ezekiel chapter 16 and 14, we ask, what happened to Sodom? Behold, this was the iniquity of thy sister Sodom. The first thing that God lists. Ezekiel 16, 49. The first thing that God lists. He said, this is what happened to Sodom. The first thing that God lists here is pride. Pride. Behold, this was the iniquity of thy sister Sodom. Pride, fullness of bread, and abundance of idleness was in her and in her daughters. 
Neither did she strengthen the hand of the poor and the needy. Here's what God said. Number one, the cities were so lux luxurious that pride, they were lifted up in pride. Number two, they were full of bread. They didn't need anything. Number three, the abundance of idleness was in them. And then what happened is homosexuality stepped in. It looks almost like our country. We've got lifted up in pride. We have an abundance of bread. Everybody stand up, pull your shirt up, and let me see your belly. I'm kidding, do not do that. Miss Tina's face just went shocked. Let's don't do that. I promise you there's no short of abundance of bread among us. We have more bread than we know what to do with. We're not hungry by any means. If you're hungry, you let me know. Brother Jack will take you out for lunch this afternoon. The abundance of bread. Then the idleness of hands. Worst thing that can happen to you is to get idle. The idleness of hands. Because when you're idle, you start stepping into things you shouldn't step into. They stepped into male-on-male -male sexuality, female-on-female -female sexuality, and it went worse and worse and worse until God sent angels down and got Lot and his family out and then poured fire and brimstone down upon them. What was their number one sin? Homosexuality? No, sir. Their number one sin was pride. Hang with me a couple more minutes. Let me tell you what pride does. Pride. Pride comes in between a person and God. Pride never says it was my fault. That's pride. Pride never says um, I'm wrong. That's pride. Pride never says, I'm sorry. That's pride. Pride never says, please forgive me. That's pride. Pride says things like this, well, I'm sorry, but... Woo! There you went. How many times have you done that? I had two ladies I pastored one time, and there was a few going in the church. A few. I'm talking about a few that... That was a, one of these feuds that make a pastor sit down in the corner and suck his thumb. Lose his mind. I'm talking about a feud now. And I'm about to have a nervous breakdown. And there's this feud going on. And I remember finally I got these two women together. And boy, we had everything worked out. I shared the word of God with them. And they began to apologize. And boy, we got everything worked out. We're on the roll now. We're about to break out in revival. So I thought in my ignorance. We get up to leave. If they just could have kept their mouth shut. What I should have done at the end of the, uh, the, the session. I should have looked at both of them and said, Shut up! Shut your mouth! Now you get out and then you get out. But don't you ever, don't you say nothing while we're here. But I wasn't smart enough to then. Now I'm smart enough. Mm -hmm. Back then they had everything worked out. And I'm thinking, man, we've sat here for two hours trying to work through this feud. And then one of them turns around, gets up to go out, got everything worked out, and said, you know, I would have never done this if you hadn't. There it went. Pride. Pride has ruined more marriages. More relationships between parents and children. More times has pride stepped in. Has Satan, the king of pride, stepped in and told you not, not, not to renege. Don't back up. Don't back down. Let me tell you something. You better back down. You're wrong. You're wrong. You're wrong. You're wrong. Go ahead and say it. I'm wrong. wrong. You're wrong more times than you think you are. I'm wrong more times than I think I am. The Bible says there's coming a day that every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that he is king, that he is Lord to the glory of God. Yeah. And sometimes you just need to be able to say, I was wrong and I'm sorry. I I'm sorry. Maybe you ought to try it today. What have you been wrong about? What are you sorry about? You know, you can't even get saved but you get sorry. Did you know that? can't get saved you get sorry the, Bi the Bible says that godly sorrow godly sorrow work in repentance 
that doesn't need to be repented of, that needeth not repented from. Godly sorrow. Godly sorrow is the kind of sorrow that says, now God, I, I've been real prideful about me. And I'm real sorry about that because I wouldn't have nothing if you hadn't given to me. Sorrow. Godly sorrow. Now what is this pride month? It's Pride Month is a month in defiance to God. Defiance to the Word of God. Defiance against everything about God. Defiance against a, a spirit of humility. A defiance against a spirit of brokenness. Defiance against that God is right and mankind is wrong. It's a complete defiance against God. No love is not love. That's a lie. It's the biggest lies you ever heard. I don't care how sweet and how kind and how... Uh, good natured the person is, it's a lie. It's a lie from Satan and it's a lie that'll drag them straight down to hell eventually. It's a lie. That's not what Jesus said hanging on the cross. Father, forgive them, but they know not what they do. And they didn't. They didn't know what they were doing. There a lot of times you did things you didn't know what you was doing. Have you done things wrong you didn't know what you was doing? You didn't have no idea what it was going to cost? You didn't know what you was doing? But there are some of these folks, they know what they're doing. And it's a defiance in the face of God. And you break off from that crowd while you can. Because when God shows up, I'm telling you, it won't be good. And there won't be no middle ground. There won't, there won't be no, no, no middle ground. There won't be no gray area. No. No, there's going to be Satan's children and God's children. I don't know about you, but I like being one of God's child. Yes. One of His children. A child of the living God. A child of humility. A child of thankfulness. A child of knowing that God did this. God saved me. God did it. I wouldn't have anything. I'm not, I'm not a child of pride. I'm a child of the living God. I hope today you're not prideful, but you're mighty thankful. Amen. But we sure are blessed. Let's pray. Father in heaven, Today, Lord, God, I know some would call this a hate speech message. And I guess in some way it is, dear God, I hate that sin. I, I hate the cartoon networks attacking and brainwashing our, our children, our grandbabies. I, I hate them trying to convince people that this sin against you is okay. And, and trying to convince them to come over to your side. God, I hate that. God, I hate it. I hate it because you hate it. I despise it because you despise it. I abhor it, God, because you abhor it. And God, I know that their phrase, they're using love as love is a lie. They paint it up, whatever they want to, use drag queens to sing it, push it down our throats, shove it, dear God, in our schools, push it on us. God, whatever they do, but you're still God. And I know this, the only real love is the kind that you have. That God is love. That God, that God is righteous. God is holy. God is a consuming fire. And God, I don't, there be any question of where I stand on this. Where our church stands on this. It may cost us for too much longer everything materially that we have. But I know God, you'll take care of us. God, put a hedge about our church, around our people, around our families, around our young people. Protect our children's minds, dear God. From these cartoons that are warping them. Help our parents and our grandparents to be wise about what's going on. I beg in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, let's stand up. We're going to sing a song. And, uh, and we'll close. Your legs went to sleep. I can tell how slow you're moving. Uh -huh. Oh, what a Savior. Oh, what a Savior. Oh, what a Savior is mine. Unto the uttermost 
wonderful, glorious. Oh, what a Savior is mine. Let me ask you something. How many of y'all enjoyed singing this morning? Praise the Lord. I'm glad you did, because I, I just have to tell you, I, I, I liked it. <laughs> I almost got beside myself. Y'all sounded so good this morning. And, uh, man, I liked it. Anybody got something to share good about God before we close? Hey, somebody take Miss Rita the mic. Hang on, Miss Rita. Let's get Miss Rita this mic right here. Run, W.D., run. That's it. Yeah, that's <laughs> Brother Don, I want to tell you that I am thankful every day for without God I know I would have nothing Amen. without my Heavenly Father Amen. there would be nothing and I know this Amen. and I thank Him every day for it Brother Don, I know that uh, I don't deserve um, what God's blessed me with. Amen. But I'm thankful. Amen. I am too, Brother Kenny. Right? Oh, Amen. He never stops uh, giving no, sir, he does not. and loving. Amen. Praise the Lord. Brother. God likes it. God likes it. Anybody else? Looks like some kind of truck. That's what it that's what a young boy ought to be playing with trucks and dozers and things. Amen. 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 Oh, well praise the Lord. Y'all have a seat. Let you be seated down there. We're gonna have a Bible verse, maybe. something about children the Lord said blessed are the children and you see that all, all the time how, how old is Barry two. two two year old two year old quoting Bible Amen. boy I hope it stays that way yeah. give me that mic let me let me let me share some Bible Uh, boy, it's been so good. I don't want to go home. Mm. Anything else? Yes, Miss Jean. 
Amen. Pray for Miss Jeannie traveling again Friday. Amen. Give us a great family. Hey, did you did you see any of y'all see that little thing that Miss Anna put on uh, the Grace Valley side a while back about the people carrying the pole and this is why we need a, a church family? Mm -hmm. Boy, that was something, wasn't it? I thought, now that's that cartoons like that talk to me. We'd all be falling if it wasn't for each other. And that's a fact. We, we hold each other up. You, you don't know how many times during the week uh, on these grounds I come up here and call your names out to God. I, I call your name out. And this is this is them, and God, this is what they need. And then I think of how many times during the week some of you call my name out yes, and uh, and get me through it. Amen. Amen. Hey, Jamie Lynn. just want to uh, pray for Carol. She's on her way to Georgia today. Okay. Amen. We sure will. On our way to Georgia. On our way to Georgia. All right. We, we sure will. We sure do that. Amen. All right. Anything else? All right then. Brother Paul, close us in prayer there, brother, if you would. Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for uh, yes, allowing us to be here, Lord. Lord, pray that you'd uh, just come back quickly. And, and Lord, I pray that uh, the, the people that need to be saved, they'd be saved, Lord. But this pride stuff, Lord, it's definitely going too far. And, Lord, we're ready for you to end it. Yes, God. Lord, we thank you. Lord, thank you for Brother Don. Thank you for this message. Lord, and uh, just pray you keep everybody safe as the day goes on. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 All right. Love you, Grace Valley. Love you. Call me if you need me. Make sure you need me.